What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome in. Happy Monday. Hope you all had an incredible weekend. Let me know if you can hear my audio okay. What's up, Lore? You are always one of the first to join. I'm waiting to see Dan say hello. Dan's always one of the first as well. Synapti second. Let's go, guys. I see a couple of you are ready to make some money this morning. Mile Zero Fights always in the house. Yep, yep, we got all the regulars here. All the people posting the most profits just coincidentally are the first people to hop in here too. There's a direct correlation between the amount of effort you put in and the amount of profits you post. And I can see most of these people here saying hello. First thing this morning are the people posting a lot of fucking profits. So hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. I am hoping this week provides us a much better week than last week. Last week kind of fucking sucked across the whole market. So I'm excited for this week. In seriously thinking of joining your team, you guys are awesome. Yep, Susan, you definitely should. Your only regret will be that you didn't join sooner. And I'm not going to start this with an ad or anything, but I will go ahead and post the link for anybody who does want to join. And I'm just going to get right into the watch list this morning because I know you greedy little bastards are going to go ahead and hit that like button for me as soon as you get off or get in. Oh, somebody said cooler is taken off. Let's start by taking a look at cooler. We called this one at 23 cents. This bad boy is up to 73 cents right now. It is the stock that can't be stopped, it looks like. Um, cooler as far as a day trade goes, I'd want to see it break about 90 cents. Um, but until it breaks 90 cents, I'm not really looking at it except as maybe a swing or long-term opportunity. Um, but let's get into the day trading watch list. If you aren't already in any of these stocks, I'm just going to go over all of the new levels with you here and now. So we'll go right down the list. SNGX is flirting with a potential breakout as we speak. I want to see it break about 73 to 74 cents. Uh, you could call it 74 even, or I've got my line right here at 0, uh, 0 0.7389. Um, you could just call it 74 cents to make it easy for you. Yeah, Dean says, morning and happy tax day. Don't forget to pay your trusty government. You boy, you, you, don't, you guys don't even want to know what my fucking tax bill is this year. Um, but suffice to say, I don't have it all. I blew it all on real estate and that fucking car and bike. I only have about half of what I owe, give or take. Um, but I am negative $130,000 this year for taxes. I've already filed an extension and I have till October to come up with $130,000 that is not in my account right now. Ooh, the government is going to fucking love me this year. But getting back on topic here, SNGX, call it about 74 cents is the break I'm looking for. LGVN, I want to see it break. Oh, this one we're just going to call $3 even. This one's an ugly one. I kind of, I hate when they do this. A big, massive green candle followed by massive red candles. I'm going to go ahead and skip this one for now. ONVO, but if you had to map a level, it'd be right there at like $1.61. Hub C, I am looking at this morning. Hub C, I'd like to see it break 217. This one, uh, not a pocket ace of setup. A very ill liquid stock. I probably wouldn't play that one. I'm going to skip it. SPCB, um, I want to see it break 41 cents. I believe I texted that one out already. If you guys aren't getting my texts, you are literally missing out on the easiest plays you've ever seen in your fucking life. Somebody just texting you levels to look for. Um, A-L-L-R. This one, man, I'm not seeing any pocket aces setups here this morning. I'm going to skip this one for now, too. T-Pet shit the bed. Um, I was looking for the break of 65 cents earlier because right here was our yesterday, or it would be Friday's high. I was looking for it to break 65 cents. It did break 65 cents and then plummeted fucking down. Now, if we wanted to play this one again, we would be looking for the break of about 68 to 70 cents. Honestly, I would just move it to 70 because you got three different wicks right here that got rejected at 70 exact. So I would be looking for the break of 70 cents on T-Pet. And I do think this is still a decent opportunity here. Even if you got stopped out on the first one, that's perfectly okay. No strategy is 100%. This strategy is not 100% either. But I have seen time and time again when the stock looks okay, even if you get stopped out once, you can play it again. Maybe you don't get stopped out the next time. But either way, you should have your stop loss 
losses in mind because no strategy is 100%. You are going to place some losing trades from time to time. And the only way to minimize your risk is to cut your losses early. So that's why we always use stop losses on this channel of about 5% under the breakout or give or take, you can increase that one or 3% if the VWAP or something is just maybe a hair below where you are gonna place that stop loss anyway. Um, and I'll get into the strategy more in just a moment here. I wanna get through the whole watch list here for all of our veteran greedy little bastards. Uh, I'll probably skip this one for now too. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of pocket aces, or really I didn't see any pocket aces. Ooh, this one's breaking right now. MPW is flirting with the breakout. We wanna wait for confirmation. Weevil took my timer away. I don't know how much time's left on the five minute candle, unless it just reset. Yeah, it just reset. Oh, it did. So um, W, or I'm sorry, MPW did just break out. It confirmed the breakout. This is exactly what we wanna see with the breakout strategy. We wanna see a five minute candle. I'm using the five minute time frame right now. We wanna see a five minute candle close, and then the next five minute candle open above the breakout level. We put the breakout level here, this yellow horizontal line at 474. This right here is what our trading plan would look like. I would want to load no less than 10% higher than the breakout. But honestly, we haven't been seeing huge channels here lately. I'm gonna say for this week, let's go to 5% past the breakout because we have not been seeing huge, huge runs like we were a couple months ago. So we're gonna go 5% past the breakout and let's be a little more conservative. This next box, we're gonna make 10% past the breakout and that's gonna be our take profit zone. So ideally on MPW, we'd wanna load right here within 5%. You're well within that right now. You're only one or 2% past the breakout. And then ideally we're selling somewhere in this green box and that's gonna be how we take profit on this one. But again, we always have our stop losses mapped out and in this one, I probably wouldn't go to a full 5% because 5% is so far below all of the EMAs and VWAP. I feel like that's too big of a stop loss in this one's case. This one's case, I'd put it at like 3.7% stop loss, which is just a hair below the VWAP, 3.5% maybe. So I would put my stop loss about right here on that one. And that way, no matter what, I don't lose that much money. And then how you have to play this now, because stop losses don't work in the pre-market, you have to manually sell your order, your shares. So if I see these candles start to dive back down, as it approaches the bottom of my red box here, I'm going to have to manually sell my shares. But having these boxes on screen allows me to easily identify the levels in which I want to buy and the levels in which I want to sell. So that's exactly what I am going to do here. And like I said, I shrank my boxes instead of loading within 10% and selling within 20. Maybe I'm loading within 5% and selling within 10%. You have to adjust your trading strategies based on what's happening in the market. Three months ago, we saw 100% plays every single fucking day. It was easy to take 20 and 30% profits on most trades. Right now, it's not that easy to take 20 and 30% on most trades. Um, if you want to log more wins more consistently, you have to adapt to the market. And the market right now isn't giving us those big, filthy, fucking juicy rockets like we were getting a couple months ago. So we're going to shrink our take profit windows. That way, we can still log those profits consistently. But MPW is looking decent right there. Let's move on down the list here, PRZO. Oh, see, so this one did not confirm a breakout. I believe I texted out $1.33 this morning on PRZO, and look at this, it got rejected right at a previous level I already had drawn on there. So PRZO, I had already identified $1.44 as a previous level of resistance, and look at that, it used that previous level of resistance beautifully. All three of these wicks got rejected just a hair above that $1.44 level. So you're gonna to start to see too, the longer you trade stocks, you're gonna to start to have levels across most of these stocks because they pop up from time to time. Um, I'd have to pull out my handy dandy trading journal to figure out when I last traded PRZO, but because I already had these lines on screen, that was helpful trading data for here, us now, today. But PRZO, I wanted to see it break $1.33, and you did have one candle um, close above it here, but the next candle did not. So you only had half of the confirmation we look for. If we only have half of the confirmation we look for, we don't take the trade. So this one should not have been traded at that $1.33 level, but now it did form a new high. So now we wouldn't be looking to play $1.33 anymore. Now we'd be looking to play this $1.44 level. I'll go ahead and make that yellow and I'll just get rid of this line right there. No longer um, pertinent to us. Moving down the list here. And I'll take everybody's questions here in just a minute as well. All oh, those ones are ugly and I wouldn't play them. SNGX is still flirting with a possible opportunity here. What I do on all of these is before I take the trade, I always identify what my trading plan is going to look like. You should not be asking 
yourself or anybody else when you're going to sell your shares after you bought. You should already know when you're going to sell your shares before you buy the shares. If you don't know your sell price in your best case and worst case scenario before you buy, you're setting yourself up to be a failing, trailer, uh, failing trader. Um, this is what my trading plan would look like on SNGX. We are getting away from that 8 a.m. market volatility here. We, in the stock chat inside of our Discord community, we refer to it as meth candles at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m. especially, but at 8 a.m. as well. Like, look right over here. As soon as 8 a.m. started, look how big all these candles got. Look, right before 8 a.m., this candle was only an 8% candle. This candle was only a 11% candle. But as soon as 8 a.m. hit, you got to a 15% candle. This one from wick to wick was 17, 18%. And then this one here at about 8, 10 a.m., bam, look at that, 40% on that single five-minute candle. That's that meth-like volatility that we refer to. Um, and what that is is some brokers are opening for the first time for the day, and they already have a backlog of orders. So let's say um, TD Ameritrade starts opening at 7 a.m. for most of their stocks. So at 7 a.m., TD Ameritrade already has millions of shares on order. So at 7 a.m., they flood the market with all these buy and sell orders just trying to trigger as much liquidity as they can. And that's exactly what you see here. Look at this fucking candle right here. That candle is another 40%. So you had a 40% candle, 40% candle. That's what you expect at those times. And those times you can expect that increased volatility would be 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 8.30, 9, and 9.30. But the big ones are gonna be 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and 9.30 a.m. Expect massive volatility on all those times. Onvo, um, I'll go ahead and draw a trading plan on this one too. We were looking for the break of $1.61. Here's our stop loss zone. If it doesn't go our way, here's our loading zone. And here is our take profit zone. And you don't have to draw your boxes exactly like me. Um, you can plus and minus these percentages however you see fit. Um, it's up to you to make your own decisions in this. I'm not a financial advisor. These videos are not financial advice. You have to do your own research. I'm not telling you when to buy or when to sell. I'm just giving you ideas and access to my own thoughts and opinions and the strategies that have made me as successful as I am today. Um, Hub C doesn't look like it's going to do shit. It's got a long way to go to get up here. Hub C, you could be looking for a breakout of this VWAP right here. VWAP is currently about $1.83. I don't know why that line was there. That's about what we're watching so far this morning. MPW, look at that. If you were quick on it, everybody already had opportunity for a 5% profit. And don't ever laugh at 5% profit. The average licensed financial advisor only gets 5% per year. So if you can get 5% per trade, you're absolutely fucking killing the industry average. 99% of retail traders that try to become profitable traders fail, and they walk away from the stock market a failed trader. That's that's the statistic. That's a true statistic. Man, try to stay, say that 10 times fast. 99% um, of traders fail. If you can get 5% over and over again though you are a massive fucking winner in the market so never underestimate the power of small wins compounding consistently looking over in the chat now If you're a failing trader, you're going to live in a failing trailer and your neighbors will offer a different kind of meth candle. Yeah, I know that all too well from my hometown. I, I always say there's there's three things in my hometown of Elkhart, Indiana. We have corn, cows, and meth. I wasn't a farmer and I wasn't a drug addict, so I had to get the fuck out of my hometown. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, everybody. That's about it. Looks like we're a little bit of a slow open here to start the day. And honestly, I kind of expected that. Most Mondays here recently have been slow starts. We've been seeing juicier action come in around like 10 a.m., 10 to 11 a.m. I do think this week is going to be better than it was last week, but that's just a guess. Could be wrong. 
Last week we had bad CPI data, and honestly I didn't examine the PPI data, but because the CPI was bad, I'm gonna go ahead and assume the PPI was bad, but maybe some of you greedy little bastards in the comments can let me know if you examined it a little closer. And if you didn't know, CPI data and PPI, they're both really measures of the rate of inflation and how the economy is doing. You can use both of them in conjunction with each other, and it just gives you a really good idea if the economy is doing good, if the economy is doing bad, if the economy is stale. Well, the CPI data shows us that the economy is doing bad, despite what President Biden is telling us, that everything's good, jobs are improving. Well, all of the statistics are telling us the opposite. Jobs are not improving. The economy is not doing better. Inflation is not doing better. In fact, inflation is getting worse. The prices of all goods are going up, be in groceries, gas, real estate. Prices are still fucking going up, despite what the economists are telling us us. CPI data is is the true measure of inflation and how the economy is doing. And it wasn't good. Jesus says he's in Elkhart building RVs now listening to this video. Yeah, that's how I spent the first few years of my adult working life was building RVs. I've done everything from roofing to um, what do they call it? Side metal hanging of the RVs and uh, final finish. Final finish was the easy department, but it don't pay as well as roofing and side hangers. Um, but I fucking hated it. Hated every moment of it. Day trading has allowed me to escape that miserable fucking life. Which RV plant you working at, Jesus? Price target a dollar on SNGX from Gal. Let's see. Um, maybe. I think it'll get rejected before a dollar. A dollar is going to act as obvious resistance on SNGX. You could go ahead and put a red line about right here at that dollar mark. But I don't think it'll necessarily touch a dollar when it gets rejected. Um, that just means it's going to experience uh resistance before that but it's always like a channel it's not always an exact price it could be like right here this could be your channel of resistance on it maybe it comes up just somewhere close to it and then gets rejected um, that's really how resistance works in most cases but if it does that even if it broke this channel and it went to somewhere in this channel that's a 20 25 percent profit you got right there so that's a decent trading opportunity here on SNGX, and we're just looking for the breakout of about 74 cents on it. Um, I don't know a famous basketball player from Elkhart, Suppa Tramp, but I believe, uh, what was the guy with the colored hair, Dennis Rodman? I believe he came from Indiana. I don't think it was Elkhart, though. Maybe. Uh, Jesus at Forest River. That was my second job ever. I was working at Forest River when I was still in high school. I'm just bouncing around here, make sure we're not missing anything. MPW's having a little bit of a breakdown here. And what you can see by this long top wick, I'll teach you guys a little bit about wicks right here too. This long top wick followed by like no body of a candle and almost and literally no bottom wick. Yeah, I was making sure I seen that right. There's no bottom wick, a very minuscule body, and then just a long top wick. That's a very bearish indication. That tells me that it, it tried to move up and it just immediately got rejected. Sellers pushed it back down immediately. So that long top wick right here can be a bearish indication, but it's just an indicator. Indicators aren't like the Bible. You don't. It's not 100% or anything like that. It's just an indication. Um, and then we stack all of these indications together um, to try to give us a clear idea of what the stock could be doing. PRZO seems to be finding support port right in this area call it a dollar 23 it's using as support and now why do i draw support right here i make that line blue i like to color code my chart to make it easy for me because we kind of bounced off right here at about a dollar 23 we bounced off here at a dollar 23 we bounced off here at a dollar 23 again again and again and again that is so many levels of support right here a dollar 23 is acting as a good level of support for us on PRZO 
So now that we know where our support is, and levels of support and resistance are broken all the time. It, just because it's a level of support now doesn't mean it always will be, but you can start to play off of that. We can see that we're using it as support and we're starting to form a channel. The channel is obviously right now from about $1.23 all the way to $1.44. You could look to play that channel over and over again. You don't even have to play the breakout strategy. That's a 17% channel. So you can see that it's kind of bouncing right here and that's an opportunity. The next way we could play it is as it's moving up here, maybe it looks to break this VWAP right here. VWAP is currently at about $1.27 on PRZ. You could look for it to break this VWAP here, and this could be your trading channel from about here to here, give or take. That's a 10% window. And remember, if you got a 10% profit right now, you're doubling the average licensed financial advisor, and it takes them a year to get 5%. So that's another trading opportunity we have right here on PRZO. Martin says, damn Forest River. He bought a park model, and after the first season, two slides wouldn't go back in. Yeah, if you guys don't know anything about trailers, even the fancy $500,000 trailers, I've built all of them. I've built the piece of shit trailers. I've built fifth wheels. I've built RVs. I've built those half million dollar trailers that look extravagant. They're all giant pieces of shit built by meth heads. 90% of that trailer factory, they're all on meth and coke. They're highly incentivized, and they're paid to build them as quickly as possible. They don't give a shit about quality. And all of the warranty departments of all of those RV factories, they're all scams. They are all paid to not pay out claims. One of my best friends worked in the warranty department most of his life. His job was literally just to delay warranty claims long enough that you'd give up and eventually stop seeking um, damages. Their job was to just tell you, hey, we're working on it. Hey, we're working on it. Hey, we're working on it. And then hopefully four months later of them working on it, you just give up and you stop pursuing your claim. Um, RVs are a giant fucking scam. I couldn't wait to get out of that industry myself. And they're paid piece rate. So the faster you build them, the more money you make and the sooner you get to go home. So they don't give a shit. They put them things together as quickly as humanly possible. And then they go home and get drunk and smoke more meth. True story. <laughs> Probably going to get censored in this fucking stream today. <laughs> Just trying to make trading fun for you guys because a lot of it is just like watching paint dry. We've identified a few different trading plans here. And here's another one, SPCB. We could look for it to break the VWAP right here. VWAP is currently sitting at about 36 cents. You could wait for it to break the VWAP. It's a very similar strategy when you're playing the breakout. Draw your trading plan first of what it could look like. That way, if it happens, you already know what you're doing. Right there, if we were playing the VWAP breakout on SPCB, that's exactly what that would look like. But because stocks can be like watching paint dry, I just try to make it fun for you guys. We talk a little bit shit. We talk a little bit of shit in between trading, make it fun and lighthearted, and maybe educate you on some things that you had no idea about. And if you were ever considering buying a trailer, I wouldn't fucking do it. I'm never buying a trailer. I've seen the inside of how they're made. I wouldn't do it. Martin says, yeah, it was $90,000 for this shit and he couldn't get any support from them and it's still broken. It, absolutely. It, you can get a bumper to bumper warranty on them RVs and they're still not going to pay out. They literally incentivize all their warranty department people to just not pay out claims. And that's probably true of, of most warranty departments, but RVs specifically. I just I happen to have a little bit of an inside look at that, and my, my but I went and ate lunch with my buddy one day. He was literally playing Warcraft and ignoring phone calls, and I was like, "You can take that if you need. Like, I'm I'm okay to wait here. I understand you have a job to do. I'm just hanging out with you for a bit." He's like, "No, they don't like when I pick up right away. I actually get punished." He would get in trouble from his supervisors if he answered the phone right away or if he solved the claims right away. They're literally punished for helping people. Nope, they want you to have to call 70 fucking times to finally get through because eventually you're going to get frustrated and give up. Slade said, question, if not an RV motorhome or schoolie, I don't know what a schoolie is. I never heard that term. What brands do they make there? Oh, I couldn't even tell you anymore. But the, the big RV manufacturers are Forest River, Heartland, Jayco, Thor. They're all your biggest ones. 
and Lippert, and I've worked at all of them. And each one has, I don't know, 10 to 30 fucking brands underneath of them. Let's go back to MPW. How's that one working out for us? Yeah, look at that one. This is this seems to be the trade of the day so far. That's twice we've been approaching a 5% profit level on this one. And I already know all you greedy little bastards are journaling your trades, right? Since you're journaling your trades, you should be able to easily see that we're not getting the same profit potential that we were three months ago. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, three months ago, it was very easy to log 20, 30, even 100% wins on some of these fucking trades. Right now, it is not that easy. Look at this. This is the Weeble top gainer list right here. Weeble has already sorted all 10,000 publicly traded companies in the entire fucking stock market, and they organized them by who is up most in stock price right now of the top 10,000 companies. And only one of, only two of them are up over 50% in stock price for the day. LGVN and SNGX, they're the only two. And the top gainer of all 10,000 publicly traded companies right now is only up 64 fucking percent. So that tells you, you cannot be expecting 100% gains. There's not one fucking stock out of 10,000 that's up 100% right now. And in fact, as you get down to the bottom of the list right here, look, it's at a, these are the top 20. So you got 20, 19, and 18 are only up 11% each. So what do you think the rest of the 9,000 990 other fucking stocks are doing right now. That means they're all less than 10% up. So if most stocks, like literally 99.9% .9 of stocks are not even 10% up, why are you trying to get a 10% gain on them? Because statistically speaking, you have a 0.01% chance of getting a 10% gain on any of these fucking stocks. So just using your trading journal and just using this little Weeble scanner here tells you you should not be holding out for a 10 fucking percent gain right now. You should be looking for 5 to 10% like maximum because only 20 fucking stocks in the entire stock market are up 10%. So you just got to, you have to use this kind of information to know where your take profit level should be. So like a lot of you who just had this opportunity on, uh, what was it? An MPW to take 5%. Some of you didn't sell when it hit 5%. Well, why the fuck not? How much are you expecting to make today? There's only 20 stocks that are up 10%. You think you're so fucking good of a day trader that you're going to get that one out of 10,000 play every fucking day that you're that fucking smart that you can always call the one stock that's going to go up 20%. You're out of your fucking mind. I'm the self-proclaimed goddamn stock god of this channel, and I can't do that. I just use this information to kind of identify where I'm going to take profit. If I know that the top 20 are barely up 10%, I'm absolutely taking 1% to 5% profits today. I, it may be a good idea to shrink these fucking windows. Look, everybody had the opportunity to easily load within 1% fucking percent of that breakout right there. So all of you should be up around... 3% right now. Remember, it takes the average licensed financial advisor an entire year to get 5%. So if you can even get half of that, just 2.5%, you can do that on a single fucking trade, but it took the professional a whole year to get 5%, you're already fucking winning. Be happy with your 2% trades in days like today, or at least mornings like today. I do think today could shape up to be a little bit better um, after market open specifically, but right now we can see that the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> it's showing you right here. None of these fucking stocks are up more than 10%. So as of right now, in this moment in time, it's probably smart to just fucking take your profit right now. But I ain't going to tell you when to sell. That's up to you to decide. I can't click the buy button for you. I can't click the sell button for you. I don't know what your financial situation is like. I don't know what your risk tolerance is. But if you sold right now, you fucking won. Congratulations. Just like this, Charles, right there, you just fucking won 2% on MPW. That may not sound like a lot, but most stocks in the stock market are not fucking up 2% right now. So you fucking killed it. Congratulations. That's an excellent trade. You did great. Great job. And I'm proud of you. A win is a win. 4% on MPW. There you go. Mile zero fights. And this is a guy who's always posting phenomenal fucking profits in our discord. 4%. How does he post phenomenal fucking profits? Because he sells in the green and he knows when to sell. Absolutely. Great job, guys. Oh, Slade said that earlier thing. A uh, schoolie, a school bus conversion. Yeah, so my brother actually did that. My brother bought a big giant yellow school bus. He painted it blue and he did all the work himself and he turned it into an RV. It's a dope little thing and he only spent like $20,000 on it. And it's just as good as any RV I've seen sell for $500,000. 
he, he spent 20 grand just retrofitting an old school bus. I think that's the way to go. If you want that camper lifestyle, you want to just have a home that moves, I think a school bus is the way to go. Way cheaper than going to Forest River or Thor or Lippert or any of them and buying a $500,000 RV that they're not going to cover if anything breaks. And then it's going to cost you $100,000 if it does break. Um, I didn't see the revenue news on cooler lore, but I do like cooler as a long-term opportunity. I'll be honest. Even when I made my video a couple weeks about them, a couple weeks ago about them, I didn't necessarily think it was going to go up 250% in the very short term, but I did identify them to be as a, a possible good long-term opportunity. And fortunately we had some instant gratification on that long-term play, but you can't expect that. If it's a long-term play, you have to expect it to play out over a long period of time. But I didn't see the revenue news, but if they beat expectations, um, uh, it doesn't surprise me. They seem like a pretty good financially stable company who has a lot of massive government contracts. So it's not surprising. I'm going to screenshot some of your guys' profits and post them in your show your, our Show Your Profit channel. Kicking off Monday morning strong. And I already know people are like, 2% ain't strong. Well, those are the fucking losers that are going to be losers in the stock market their whole fucking life because they don't know when to take profit. I literally just showed you 9,980 stocks that aren't up 5%. And you think 2% is a bad trade? Get out of here. Let's bounce back around here, see what's going on. SNGX is kind of... Uh, Having a bit of a breakdown here. Ooh, here's a new one. This one just popped up. ICCM, definitely not a pocket aces setup, but I'd go ahead and put the next level at $1.70. This is how we identify our trades on the breakout strategy. We use the Weeble top gainers, these top 20 stocks, because they have the most momentum in the stock market currently. And usually when you have this much momentum, you usually have a lot of volume with it too. Not always. It can be a little bit of volume to spike a stock up as well. But in most of these cases, they do have a lot of volume. And in either case, they have momentum and we're using a momentum-based strategy. So once it has a high, and then it pulls back and confirms that pullback right here it was confirmed because this candle closed and it closed lower than here so that put our um, pre-market high now at a dollar sixty nine nine or you can call it a dollar seventy to use a nice round number um, but that would be the next level I want to look for it to break now is a dollar seventy on ICCM another medical stock I think just about on any given day half of these weeble top gainers are always medical stocks Medical stocks can run on some juicy news. And one day, NWBO will too. <laughs> one day. I still have a lot of conviction in that stock. But it's been disappointing for quite some time now. ONVO. Oh, I see you guys talking about ONVO. Am I missing something here? Yep, ONVO is flirting with our breakout right now. We identified $1.61 as our breakout earlier in the stream. It's flirting with it now. We have two and a half minutes left on the current five-minute candle. We want to wait for it to confirm. Or if you're a greedy, impatient little bastard, you can scalp it. But that's a different strategy. Scalping would be you're going to buy right now. I'll even draw a new box. You'd buy right this fucking second, and then you're going to sell at like 1% to 5% higher. That would be your trading strategy right here. If you were going to play a scalping strategy, you buy now and then hope to sell right here. But then your um, stop loss is going to actually be something like this right here. Oh, that is way too dark. You can't even see that. Can't see that either. Damn. You can kind of see it, but that's about what that strategy would look like if you're looking to scalp it. Scalping is like I would consider it less than a 5% gain. So you're looking for a 1% to 5% profit and you can scalp these over and over and over again. Or you're going to wait for confirmation, which is another minute and a half left on the current five minute candle, see what happens and then load and then hopefully sell right in here. That's your two different trading strategies right now on ONVO. Thanks for pointing that out in the chat, guys. 
That is the power of an excellent fucking community here. I had three people telling me what stock to look at. While I'm over here ranting and raving and talking about irrelevant bullshit, I had three alphas right here telling me to put my eyes on the prize, ONVO right here. Could have missed this trading opportunity if I wasn't surrounded by like-minded, greedy little bastards just like you. That's exactly what you'll get inside of our Discord community as well. Like-minded, greedy little bastards that are all interested in helping you and all interested in making fucking money together. If that sounds like a community you want to be a part of. I just dropped the link right there. I'm not going to give you a long-winded sales pitch today, um, but click that link. Your only regret will be not joining sooner. Amazing community of traders, analysts, coaches, plus me, Andrew, Brendan, extra live streams. While this live stream is free, we host extra live streams inside of the Discord. We have one of the best day traders I've ever met on the face of this earth, Coach Crisp, inside our Discord. That motherfucker, I, I swear, he makes money with his eyes closed. Those are the type of coaches you get inside of our community. Damn, look at this one. ONVO is running. Juicy opportunity for everybody. If you were scalping, you already had chance for 5%. Look at the Zelda chick. Zelda took that fucking thing right there. 140 to $1.75, 25% on ONVO. Let's go. But Zelda, how the fuck did you, how did you get 25% on it? That's way more than a scalp. But either way, I'm happy for you. Zelda's always logging some profits. I've seen one of the uh, Zelda I know too. Um, I, I like to take a personal... No interest in all of you guys once you get in here and i've been paying attention to zelda zelda came in um if i'm not mistaken did pretty well with our breakout strategy but almost immediately realized they wanted more and has been hanging out in our options channel for quite some time and has been killing it with our fucking options as well great job where's your show your profit channel here we go great job oh og camo gaming got greedy took 10 percent on onvo let's go Um, Franca Villa says, love you, but your mouth is a little too filthy. I am sorry. We used to start all of our streams by saying, put the kids in the closet. And that was a direct reference to, we swear a lot and your kids shouldn't be around these streams. I apologize. I just try to be my authentic, genuine self. And when I get fired up and when I'm passionate, um, I swear a lot. I do apologize. I'm trying to work on it because I have a newborn son myself, but... I'm not perfect at it, and I do swear too much, so I do apologize. Zelda says, yep, loving options. Yep, yep. I've been seeing you in there every day in them options live streams. At 9.30 a.m. EST, we have anywhere from one to three or four of our coaches going live and teaching you guys options, teaching you different option strategies, giving you call prices, giving you strike prices, giving you exit times and dates. Like, I don't know what more you want from a fucking community. Non-financial advice, of course. Oh, NVO. Oh, look at that one. I, I think that's the trade of the day so far. That was 15% past the breakout. And then that, that's another um, uh, note to self, if you will. You all just witnessed it. Our best trade of the day today so far has been 15% past the breakout because that's primarily what we're playing right here in this stream is the breakout strategy. So if the best trade of the day only went up 15%, you can't reasonably expect all of your other trades to go up 15 or more percent. The fucking best trade of the day only went up 15%. So if that's the best, that means the, the, the rest of your trades need to be less than 15%. So that kind of tells you where you should be taking profit at. And that changes all the time. Maybe today, all of a sudden, these stocks all start running 300%. Maybe by the end of the day, there's five stocks that are up 300%. Well, at that, you can use that new information to determine a new trading strategy. Maybe throughout the day, you learn that, eh, fuck the 5% anymore. Now we can start taking 20, 30, 40, 50% because you're seeing enough new information and uh, new indicators telling you that you can um, trade more aggressively. But right now, we're not seeing that data. Right now, the data we have tells us we should be locking in 5 to 10 percent profits or if you're zelda chick i don't i don't know when she got in i don't know i don't know how you got 25 percent on that one but uh lend me your crystal ball if you will i need that crystal ball on my side look at that cold deep says joining from india let's go helping people all over the world make money oh justin churchill got five percent Churchill gave us one of our amazing testimonials. If you've been following this channel for a while, Churchill gave us an amazing testimonial. And dare I say it, he may have a beard more epic than mine. Guy looks like a fucking wizard. 
One day I'll get my beard looking like you, Churchill. Never even met him in real life, but just looking at his beard, he looks wise. Looks wise beyond his years. And now ONVO, caffeine is kicking in and it is having an urgent code brown as we speak. Kingdom Gamers in Israel. I didn't know that, Kingdom. You've been following us for a while. I didn't know you're in Israel. Yeah, literally, people all over the world making money with these strategies. So easy, you can do it from any country anywhere as long as you can trade U.S. stocks. That's the caveat. I don't know what countries can and can't. Um, I think you can use VPNs, and if you use a VPN, you can literally do it from any country. Just pretend you're from the U.S. As I bounce around here, it is a little bit of a boring day. MPW is still a decent opportunity here. It's still 3% past the breakout. It looks to be riding this 9 EMA pretty healthily here. So MPW could continue to just kind of slowly stair-step its way up. Take a mental note, we're only six minutes away from, uh, oh, five minutes away now from official market, uh, almost official market open. We're only five minutes away from 9 a.m. Market open is 9.30 a.m. But at 9 a.m., we do see increased volatility as some brokers begin trading more and more shares. But 9.30 a.m. is the official market open where it gets crazy. Oh, I see V says, has a call today with Wolf to start learning options. Yep, Wolf is another excellent day trader. Um, and Wolf and Crisp have something common in our Discord. They're both younger souls, and they're both already killing it learning stocks and options. Well, not learning, but trading stocks and options and now teaching other people how to trade stocks and options. And Crisp, I kind of forget his real age, but he's like 22 or 23. He's a young kid, but he's been day trading since he was 14. He had a couple uncles that taught him early on, and he's only like 23 and already has a decade of experience trading this stuff. And he's one of the best day traders and educators I've ever met in this niche. He's just like us where he can break it down simply, um, so simple a fifth grader can learn it, and his strategies work. You see it every single day in our stock chat and in our uh, Show Your Profit channel where people are tagging our coaches with um, excellent wins and stuff and crediting them for their wins. That's exactly what you get in our community. ONVO is still looking pretty healthy here too. A little bit of a code brown, but pushed right back up. And then the opposite is true earlier when I was talking about that long top wick on that earlier stock being bearish. This one has a long bottom wick and no top wick. That can be seen as bullish because as it was looking to push down, buyers came in and pushed it back up. That's a bullish indication. And then as you can see, that's exactly what kind of happened right here. I want to kind of shrink this box just to get it out of the way so you can see this wick a little better. As soon as it got pushed back up, what did that next candle do? It started a bullish green candle on that next one and pushed right back up. And that was a bullish indication we had right there by seeing that long bottom wick. Long bottom wick equals bullish. Long top wick equals bearish. Bearish means bad, means it's going to go down. Bullish means good, means it's going to go up. And I guess your good and bad roles could be reversed if you're playing options, because if you play options, you know how to play the downside of a stock as well, in which case, if you're trying to play the downside, then you want it to go down. So in that case, down good, up bad. Um, and that's something else we can teach you in the Discord too, is how to trade options, play both sides of the stock. Like if you've identified today sucks ass for all these stocks and you think they're all bearish, well then play the downside. You don't have to play the upside. Play to the trend of the market. If it's trending up, then play the upside. If it's trending down, then play the downside. And then you make money in both markets. If the whole US economy crashes tomorrow, the dollar becomes worthless, the economy fucking crashes, there are still gonna be people making money in the stock market because there are still gonna be people who know how to play the downside. And if you don't know how to play the downside and the economy crashes, well, you're out of fucking money. You're not gonna know how to make money in that market. And you're gonna lose all of your money because you were only playing the upside and then it crashed. Now you're going to lose all your money and you don't know how to make more money. You're, 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 it's a losing scenario. Rent right here, flirting with a breakout. Um, this is a $22 stock. I don't love $22 stocks. Um, I don't know if I would even play this breakout even. Uh, the pre-market high today was like $22.19. It's flirting with that now, but I can see just as early as Friday, it was way above that. 
Um, I may skip rent, even though it's looking juicy in the moment. Rent is looking a lot better if it can break $28, but then you're going to go ahead and expect obvious resistance at $30. I myself would just skip rent, but those are the levels I'm looking at on it if you don't want to skip it and you want to trade it. Um, Lore says, here's a bit of psychological hurdle when day trading. Every time I buy, I feel like I have to get a good percentage since the cash will take two days to settle. Well, a couple things on that. A, you just have to get that out of your mind. Um, you have to have patience in the stock market. Most people don't get rich overnight. Most people don't get rich their first year. Most people fail. So you have to have a long-term outlook on stocks. You just want to be profitable consistently over a long enough time horizon, and that can change your life. So you got to practice a little patience. And good news is they are shortening that settlement period to, um, I, I forget the date. Somebody said in the last stream, maybe one of you can post it in the comments for me. What date is the T plus one rule taking effect now. The stock market for the last many years has had T plus two, which means it takes two days to settle your funds. Now they're shortening that to just one day. So here soon, you're going to be able to get your funds settled the very next day. So like if you deposit money today, that money should be available for you to trade tomorrow. So only one day settlement periods. And if you sell your stock today, you should be able to trade with that money tomorrow. Um, and I believe that's taking effect like June 6th or something or May, May 6th. I, I don't remember the date. Hopefully somebody can comment it down below. I'm sure a quick Google search would tell us. Um, but that is coming into play soon, so we won't have to worry about that too much longer. MPW is breaking out again. Where's, where's that greedy little bastard? Yep, MPW is breaking out again. So our new breakout level was right here at like 493. Ooh. I don't ever play a breakout that close to five. I would have just played $5 then because from 493 to five is such a small channel. And I am going to expect obvious resistance at $5, especially like right here. You can see we already got rejected at 499 on this long bearish wick right here that we identified earlier on MPW. So 499, we've already been rejected off once. So for me, the next breakout opportunity is gonna be $5 on it. But MPW, look at that, nice healthy 5% profit. Can you believe some people go to college for four fucking years and then have to get extra certifications and shit and licenses just to be able to give legal licensed financial advice and then they only get their clients 5% per year return, but then they charge their clients 2% of their total portfolio just to manage the portfolio just to get them the 5%, but they took 2%, so they really only got you 3% return per the year and it took them four fucking years to learn how to do that, but you just got five fucking percent watching a free live stream video on YouTube I hope that's worth a like. As you can tell, I'm a little fired up today. I'm excited because as soon as this live stream is over, I am taking the boat out today. It is 88 and sunny here in sunny Savannah, Georgia, and I'm going to be taking the boat out, and I'm going to try to make $1,000 day trading on my boat today. I'm going to try to do it from my phone, but I'm taking my laptop just in case. I will turn on my mobile hotspot, and I'm going to try to film a video where I can hopefully make $1,000 today trading from a boat. Wish me luck, fingers crossed, but I'm excited to get out. This will be my first boat trip of the year this year. But I couldn't resist. 88 and sunny, I got to get out there and enjoy it. Look at that, Miles Zero Fights just got another 3.5%. That's already two wins today. Fucking killing it. Killing it, man. There's a little bit of irony in saying that to Miles Zero Fights because I believe he is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fucking master. So talking about killing it, he probably could kill you. Oh, that's his third win today. My mistake, my mistake. I didn't mean to insult you there. Shout out to my wife who just walked by. She is starting her first day of work from home today while taking care of our newborn son. That is no easy feat to try to manage a full-time job, even if it is work from home. She is managing a full-time job as a social worker. And I just seen her walk by holding my son, the ultimate multitasker, a mother who can work full-time and still provide for your infant. You gotta love him. I hope that put a smile on her face. I know her. I know she heard at least some of that as she walked away. Yep, 
Yep, yep. And then Trisha Pierce, it actually gets a little better. She says, uh, that sounds awesome out on your boat, making a video and making money. Yep. And making that video makes my boat a tax deduction. Now, this is hard and most people can't do this legally. But in my niche, because I'm an influencer and I make videos for my business, my boat is 100% tax write off, all of it. All of the expenses included, the gas, the maintenance, the membership, everything, it's all written off and it's all completely legal through section 179 of the IRS tax code, which allows you to write off anything that is um, necessary and or um, essential to your business. And being that I do make a lot of content with it, 100% write off because that is my business. So a tax deduction and make money and enjoy the sun. It's a win, 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 win. Those are the kinds of things you can expect to learn from us. How to dodge taxes legally and how to make money legally. Let's see here. That's about what we're watching. SNGX is getting close to flirting with the breakout here. It looks like we got a strong bounce off of this 21 EMA right here. That's a good healthy sign pushing up. The next thing I want to see it do is break through this VWAP that it's flirting with right this second. 66 cent, uh, 66 cent breakout on SNGX for the VWAP. This could be a good trading opportunity right here. Look, it's it, it's over 10% before it even hits this little resistance at 74 cents. So we have a nice 10% window right here. And it did just confirm the breakout above the VWAP. It was a small confirmation, but it did confirm. You could look to identify, you could look to enter this trade right now within 1% of that breakout and then sell anywhere within this green box right here. But because we're disciplined traders and we know we are going to place some losing trades from time to time and sometimes we're going to be wrong, sometimes it's going to just go backwards. We have to know where we're going to cut our losses at. I'd be cutting my losses. Honestly, right, I don't want to go that low. That's 10%. I would just put it right here at 5%. So if it pushes down, which it is right this second, I'm going to cut my losses about right here. That way I don't lose too much money on it. That puts my cut loss around 63 cents. So if I bought right here 66 to 67 cents, I'm going to cut my losses at about 63 to 62 cents if it doesn't push back up here. So why do I now have visions of Mike singing I'm on a boat? <laughs> I might do it. I might do it today. Come on, SNGX. Push up. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. ONVO looks like it found some support here at the VWAP and the 9 EMA. So you could be looking at a bounce opportunity right here on ONVO. Bounce opportunities could also be kind of like a scalping opportunity. If you identify a level that you think it's going to bounce at, go ahead and look to load and take one to 5% profit. And again, always have your stop loss in mind as well if you're going to do that. But bounce opportunities are genius as well. I've, I've watched Andrew make a lot of money on our channel just playing bounces. Jedi Master said it's dark over here in Washington. Washington State, man, you on the other side of our country, which for most country, most continents is like the other side of the continent. We live in a massive country over here. Tesla Klee says if you're below pattern day trader, you should uh, only be playing A plus trades, which don't happen every day anyway. Absolutely. You don't have to trade often to make money. That's an excellent point you made. You only have to trade well. Um, fewer is probably better if you can't place unlimited trades or if you're constantly having to wait on settled funds. Um, less can be more. Look for pocket aces setups. And honestly, I haven't seen any pocket aces setups yet this morning, except the couple of like bounce opportunities we saw. Like, look at that. That was like a pocket aces type bounce because you had the 9 EMA and the VWAP right there together. We said it could be bouncing. It already looked like it was bouncing. And look at that. If you played the bounce off that 9 EMA and VWAP, you'd already be up 10% right now on ONVO, which is literally what we were just fucking talking about playing the bounce off of. That would be kind of a pocket aces setup in the bounce. But as far as like the breakouts and stuff, I'm not seeing a lot of pocket aces. 
This one though, now that it's starting to form some actual volume over here, because this was very illiquid and trading sideways, now that we came up, we formed a high, pulled back, formed a high, pulled back. This one kind of is setting up to be a little bit of a pocket ace is set up. It's looking pretty healthy. The next breakout on ONVO is gonna be right here at about $1.84. That's really close to $2. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a line right here at $2, expecting resistance close to two. And that doesn't give us a big channel from $1.84 to two. That's 8%. That's well within reason that we could play. Or you could just wait for the break of two. Two different ways you could play ONVO right here. I see Zelda just took ONVO at $1.58. So you're up a little bit. If you got in at $1.58, you're up about 1% to 2% as we speak. Nothing to write home about, but still healthy gains. You might be up 3% now. Let's go. Uh, Justin Scott said May 27th. So May 27th, we think that the T plus one rule is going into effect. Thank you, Justin. Look at that. Zelda out at $1.65. In at $1.58, out at $1.65. Rinse and repeat. That's how it's done, guys. Right there. Zelda chick just showed you exactly how you fucking do it. That's how you make money in the market. Even on slow days that look unideal or in ideal, absolutely incredible. SPCB is pushing up a little bit here too. We're only 20 minutes away from market open. Remember market open is gonna get a little sketchy. You're gonna see massive moves in both directions on all of these five minute candles at market open at 9.30 a.m. EST. You're gonna see many candles look exactly like this one does right here. It's gonna be like that, like bam, it's just gonna be 15 to 40% on a single candle. You'll see it across almost all of these stocks. And you'll see this list completely switch around. These top 20 now may not be the top 20 come 9.30, 10 a.m. May be a completely different list. I always look to get me a new watch list going around 11 a.m. or so. But that's really looking like that's about it, guys. I gave you the whole watch list. I'll give you a couple more minutes here. Ask any questions. I will answer the ones that I feel I can answer. And I'm never afraid to tell you if I don't know. But if you guys have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them for you and offer you as much value as I possibly can before we wrap up this stream here. But I can hear my boat calling my name right now. <laughs> and I'm going to attempt to make $1,000 from my boat today. But even that, 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 we can talk about that for a brief second too, the trading psychology of what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to make $1,000 today from the boat, but I may not be successful, and I'm not going to beat myself up if I'm not successful doing that. And you can't kind of go all in. Like if your goal was to make $1,000, it's not like life where you're like, I'm either gonna, f like I'm gonna win no matter what. Well, that's, that's a bad mentality in the stock market. I think in a lot of times, and a lot of day traders have this rule that if they place three losing trades in a day, they take the rest of the day off. Why make it five? Why make it six? Why make it 10? A lot of traders, um, that's their own stop loss for the day. Three losing trades means they take the day off. Three losing or maybe it's two losing days in a row, they take the rest of the week off. You have to stop loss your own trading as well, not just stop loss your single position, but sometimes you have to stop loss your actions in the market. So today if I go out to the boat and it's not fucking working out and I'm placing a losing trade, losing trade, losing trade, then I'm absolutely just gonna stop. I'm not gonna bleed myself to death just trying to prove a point. Fuck it, I'll go out a different day and try it again. Um, and then I've already identified that today is not an ideal day for our upside potential on these stocks. Right now, the top stock in the market is only up 73%. Right below that, number two is only up 60%. And then number three isn't even up 50% right now. These are small gains we're seeing. 
Kingdom Gamer, do I have any red days? Absolutely. I am not perfect by any means. Um, and I share, I don't have it with me right now. I haven't updated it in the last couple of days, but my, I shared inside the discord regularly, my own trading journal, and I do have stop losses. Absolutely. I'm a hundred percent transparent in that. I do consider myself a really good trader and I log way more wins than I do losses, but I 100% do log losses from time to time. Fortunately, I've learned my lesson through years of mistakes and my losses in the last many months have not been bigger than five or seven or maybe 10% here and there. And I never trade more than 20% of my entire portfolio in any one day trade. So even when I do lose somewhere between two to 10%, I'm only losing two to 10% of maybe 10% of my portfolio. So it's not a massive detriment to my trading portfolio. Um, I had some big losses early on in my own trading career where I went all in and I lost 90 plus percent of my portfolio on a single trade. I've blown up my account about three different times in my trading life. Um, I blew it up once in crypto. Well, it's kind of three in crypto. It's three different cryptos that blew up my portfolio, but I did the same thing on all three of them. All three of them I bought at the top. All three of them are down like 90 plus percent to this day. I still haven't sold them. I'm down like 90% of my crypto portfolio. I gave up trading crypto. I'm not the crypto guy. Don't come to me for crypto advice. I ain't going to give it. I'm the stock guy. Um, and then I had like DWAC where I lost 90 something thousand dollars on DWAC. I went all in and I didn't have a stop loss. Lesson learned. I ain't never fucking doing that again. SNGX is going. Yep, yep. It broke that VWAP. Look at that little VWAP break. Excellent, excellent. And did not stop out off after it broke it. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. Look at that. Nice 7% juicy fucking gain right there. You're laughing in the faces of all those schmucks who went to college for four years. They're $100,000 in debt and they can't do what you just did. 8% on SNGX. You're shitting on their college education. I love it. Absolutely love it. Some people are in debt $100,000 right now to do less than what you just did. Yeah, I'll never claim to be perfect on this channel, but I will do my best to help you learn from my mistakes so that you hopefully don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. Look at that. Nathan Clark, 8% SNGX. You guys are absolutely killing it. I love you greedy little bastards. What else would you guys rather be doing right now? You see everybody making money and some people are sleeping. Some people are watching Netflix. Some people are scrolling on their phone, watching girls twerk on TikTok when they could be making money with the rest of us. And don't get me wrong, I love a good twerk video too, but that shit, that's polluting to your mind. It's killing your ability to make money. One of my friends told me to make a video, My actually my real estate agent and partner in real estate, he told me to make a video about how the average TV, it may cost $2,000 at the store, but it costs you over $400,000 in your lifetime because the lifetime value it takes away from you. You end up spending 40 years of your life all together watching TV. I just made that number up, obviously. But you watch two hours a night, seven days a week, maybe Saturday, Sunday, you're watching TV for four or five hours a day. You add up all those hours over the course of your lifetime, you wasted like 10,000 plus hours on it. 10,000 plus hours, most of you make probably somewhere between 15 to $30 an hour. Times that by 10,000 hours and tell me how much fucking money you just wasted on something that provided literally no fucking value to your your life what's so fucking ever oh but i need my relaxation time that's all a fucking scam to keep you stuck in the matrix for the rest of your life it's a fucking scam and it's costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars to waste your time and energy on shit that provides no return on investment to your life fuck netflix this is where you need to be right here watching and learning how to trade mile zero fights just logged his fourth fucking win for the day four percent again and again and again he, um, he was actually one of our amazing testimonials as well, where he took $5,000 and turned it into a six fucking figure account. You can't do that if you're spending all of your time on TikTok and Instagram and fucking Netflix. You got to get rid of those poisons in your life and start investing your time and energy into something that can provide an actual return on investment like trading stocks and options. Whew, I'm fucking fired up. <laughs> YouTube is the exception. Absolutely. 
Um, when I started to get really sick of my fucking life at Olive Garden, and I just started to hate who I was. I started to hate my life. I started to hate my circumstances. What I started doing is I stopped watching TV and 100% of my TV time was replaced with YouTube time. And I devoted all of my time and energy into watching free YouTube videos. And I taught myself how to trade stocks and options, which is like what most of you are doing right now here as well. You're obviously watching this stream in the attempt to learn how to trade stocks and options. That was step number one for me. Step number two was become filthy fucking rich and go work from a boat today. Uh, it all comes. It all comes with how you choose to spend your time. I'm glad to see all of you are in here investing your time more wisely than girls twerking on TikTok. As enticing as that sounds. PLL here is flirting with a breakout. I don't love this stock though. I personally would not be playing this setup. But I wouldn't hate you if you did. Right now, it does have volume supportive of trading. But many of these candles did not. I personally would sit this one out. But it is flirting with a breakout. Oh, look at this. Robert Ainsworth said, Team Alpha Trading last week, we grew his portfolio 12.5% in the last week alone. And again, it bears worth repeating. Average licensed financial advisor who you got to pay 2% of your portfolio to per year. 2% of your entire portfolio. Even if they lose you money in that year, even if your portfolio started at 100 grand and now at the end of the year, it's only at 80 grand, they still charge you the 2% of your entire fucking portfolio to get you those abysmal fucking results. But right here, you just grew your portfolio more than double that, almost triple that, 12.5% in a single fucking week. Absolutely. And then Ken Sharp with a 7%. You guys are killing it. Now, I like to repeat that part a lot because I think too many of us hold ourselves to too high of a standard. That 5% doesn't change my life today. And no, it probably doesn't. But over and over and over again, over the course of a year or three, it is life changing. And even if it does take three years to change your life, so fucking what? What other plan do you have right now that is going to change your life in three years? Do you think working at that RV factory for the next three years and doing the absolute best you can and being the fucking best employee for that RV factory, do you think that is going to change your life? Even if you're the number one employee who never misses a day, is always early and always works late, they're still not going to give a fuck. And that in the RV industry, they're, gonna, they're still going to lay you off every fucking summer and every fucking winter. You're going to get laid off. All of these jobs, they don't give a shit about you and they don't give you the opportunity to actually change your life, even if it does take you a few years in stock market. So what? Isn't it worth it? What else are you going to do with your time? So I just think it bears worth repeating a lot that the average licensed professional financial advisor only gets 5% per year. So if you can get even close to that, you're killing it because I think all of us would rate ourselves as amateurs, novices, not professionals, not licensed. So, I mean, if you can get close to what a professional is doing, you're killing it. Imagine saying you're good enough to be a professional football player right now, even if you're not on a professional team. That's huge. Charles Carpenter, 3%. Let's go. And even if these seem like small wins, they're not small wins. Look at what the whole market is doing. The whole market is less than 10% up in stock price right now. Look at this. Let's go to the top losers. Look at all these stocks that are down 75%. MRNS is down 75 fucking percent today. And you just got a 3% gain in a market that's providing us these abysmal type of returns. You're doing great. Sometimes I think we put two harsh and unrealistic of expectations on ourself. So I like to be the voice in your head that reminds you that you're doing good and that you are on the right path and that life-changing results start one small step at a time. You don't change your life in one trade for most people. You don't trade your life in one action. It's one action that's repeated over and over and over again consistently over a long enough time horizon. And if you guys are consistently logging these three and seven percents, like Shelly just did, seven percent, you're going to change your life. It's inevitable. Slick says, preach it. I'm in my last week as a property manager. He's never been late, never took a vacation. 
and now he's starting day trading by watching our videos and others. He'll take a 5% week anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Zelda's taking another trade, ONVO. Let's go, Zelda. That means it's pretty good, right? Zelda's got the crystal ball over there. Um, I don't know how to say this one. Scorpio, 2% ONVO. Great job, great job. That's half of the average licensed financial advisor, and they took a year to do it. You took three minutes. You took three minutes to get half of the result of this motherfucker who took a year. Oh, that's, a, that's incredible. You guys are shitting on the industry standards. <laughs> Just another computer nerd's talking about kicking his desk over and set the PC on fire. Uh, Robert says we are our own biggest critic. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I preach it so much. And that's why I say it in every live stream. Um, some of us just need that reminder. And it, it helps to know that um, other people are thinking like us and that we're on the right path. Sometimes we just want a little confirmation. And I can be that confirmation. But that's about it. We're about uh, six minutes away from market open here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this stream here today. Um, I love you all. Appreciate you clicking that like button, sharing this with your friends and family. I'll drop that link for you one more time if you guys want to get into the amazing Discord. If not, I mean, you can keep watching Netflix and go nowhere with your life the rest of your life if you want. Or if you're serious about investing time and energy into learning a life-changing skill like now, click the link that I just dropped for you in the comments. Zelda Chick just made another fucking win right in front of your eyes right here. Um, click the link, join the team. Um, we'll get you onboarded, get you in, maybe even offer you a full one-on-one -on -one coach if that's something you're interested in. We're the only Discord community on earth that offers true one-on-one -on -one training, but you don't have to get the one-on-one -on -one training. We offer lower tier programs as well. We teach you stocks, we teach you options, we teach you a little bit of crypto. I'll even teach you real estate inside of my um, uh, Discord community. I'm up to seven properties now myself. I can teach you how to reinvest all of your earnings into something that's a little more passive for you if that's something you're interested in. It's just a community of like-minded investors. We're all interested in making money. And the only regret I ever get from anybody, and this isn't just me being funny or salesy. It's literally, I wish I joined sooner. That's the number one regret I get from everybody that comes through our community by far. I regret not joining sooner. And that's going to be your only regret as well. Click the link. I'll see you guys on the inside. And I look forward to seeing you in the show your profit channel, just like Zelda chick, just like Justin Churchill, Robert Ainsworth, um, all these people in the stock chat here this morning, making fucking filthy degenerate type money. Lore always posting thousand dollar gains in the discord. Ken, Robert, everybody. Love you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Wish me luck on my boat today.